what should we think about the Asbury revival that is going on in Kentucky right now? Hello, my name is Ken Yates from Grace Evangelical Society, and I would just like to share with you uh, my thoughts on this particular thing. There are a number of issues that come up here, as I understand it, and as I'm watching online about what's going on, I have a number of problems with what is going on. Obviously, many people see it as a mighty work of God. It's a revival, and we've been praying for revival. But what does the Bible have to say? As you look at what's going on, we have to come away and say, much of what's happening there has no basis in the scriptures. First of all, where does the scriptures talk about this need in the New Testament for such a revival? Here we have for going on for about a week, people packing this chapel out, and there's no great amount of teaching, no great amount of preaching going on. Uh, basically, it is a time when people get together and feel the movement of God, where there's a lot of music. I understand there's a lot of acoustic guitars, and there is no doctrinal basis for this. In fact, when you hear about who's coming, it is a very ecumenical or uh, a movement that that spans different uh, denominations. One of the things that strikes me is that there is no clear gospel presentation. I saw one podcast guy talking about it, and he says, anybody who has any problems with what is going on at Asbury he says, I question whether they're saved or not. Well, I'm one of those people. So already you see this person who who's talking like this. What does this have to do with the gospel, the gospel of eternal life? For example, if someone looks at this and says, you know what? Um, I really don't see any biblical basis for this. I don't see any sound doctrine being taught. I just see people coming together. Uh, because they like the music or they like what's going on or it's a it gives them a good feeling it gives them a liver quiver however they want to say it and if anyone has a question for that you or have a problem with that you question whether they're saved or not even if this were a mighty work of god which i don't think it is uh even if it were that still would not impact the eternal life that a person would have or not have. If you have believed in Jesus Christ for eternal life, you have eternal life and you can never lose it. And it doesn't matter if you look at this and say, what in the world is going on here? The other thing is what you see, for example, I just saw a video of part of this revival is they're casting out a demon from a young lady, as far as I could tell. And Biblically, where is the basis for that? When you see how they're doing it, where do they where do they find this procedure to go through for casting out of the demon, uh, casting out a demon out of a young woman or out of a young man for that for that uh, matter? It's not in the scriptures. Uh, we're not told to cast out demons, and so we see that this is a a movement, if you will in which people are excited because of the music, because they're with other young people, whatever the case may be. But there is no doctrinal basis for what is going on. There's no scriptural mandate for this. I heard uh, one quote-unquote testimony of what's going on, and they're talking about the fact that Jesus is on the throne here, and we have people from all over the country, all the way from California, for example, coming to be there. Where is that in Scripture, that, that there is a place where Jesus is centralized and people should travel 3,000 miles to get there? And you can't do that in your local church in the same way that if you want this tingling in your arms and legs, you need to come to this place. Again, I would ask, where where is the scriptural uh, teaching on that? I think my bottom line problem 
with this Asbury revival is the author of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter five talks about taking in the word of God and that growth can only happen that way. We take in the word of God, we put it into practice. Where is that happening in this Asbury revival? They admittedly say there's not much teaching. This is just a movement from God where we just feel him and we're just in his presence. I don't find any support for that in the New Testament. And it's striking to me that they 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 promote it by saying, oh, there's people from all over denominations. The bottom line there is doctrine's not important. If you believe in the assurance of eternal life, great. If you don't, that's okay too. We just all want to get together and just sing, sing kumbaya. And one of the guys I heard talking said, talking about it said, well, this is a movement where uh, big name people aren't involved and people uh, are jealous because they're not invited to speak there. And that's the problem they have with this. Well, I'm not a big name person and I'm not jealous. I'm just very, very concerned about the things that are going on. The bottom line is the things that are being practiced, there is no scriptural mandate for that. And I only do this because uh, I, I I hope that people can look at this Asbury revival through the lens of scriptures and not be carried away by emotions and simply ask, do the scriptures support this? And what you'll find is there's very, very little scriptural basis for what is going on. And I think the people who are involved in it would admit it. And that's why they don't say it. And they say, oh, no, this is just a great movement of God. So I would caution you to use extreme caution in jumping on the bad wagon of what's going on there in Kentucky. If you like what you've heard, press the like button. And if you really like it, press the subscribe button. And remember, keep Christ in focus. Mm -hmm.